As we continue our discussion of degrees and radians, our next goal is to fill out the um, angle measurements in degrees and the arc measurements in radians at these 16 specific locations around the unit circle. And the reason these are special 16 places are these are the places that are, that are formed with our special right triangles. This is a 30, 60, 90 that's laying down and this is a 45, 45, 90 and then we have a 30, 60, 90 that's standing up. So because of that, because they're special right triangles, we have um, special values of the sines and cosines of the x and y coordinates of these points. And so when usually a, a unit circle has, you know, includes all points that are one, one degree from the origin, excuse me, one unit from the origin, but um, when you say the unit circle, that usually refers to these 16 specific spots. So what we need to do with this video is be able to, to label the degree measurements and the radian measures for these, these spots. And what you need to do um, soon is to be able to, when you hear a degree or radian measure, to understand where that is on the unit circle. So if I say 210 in degrees, you need to visualize this location down here in the third quadrant. And if I say um, 3 pi over 2, you need to immediately go to this this point down here because we're going to work with these and you need to know where that spot is if you're going to use it. And so that's our goal, to not only be able to fill this out, but to <clears throat> be able to, in your head um, or on paper, um, to, to find that spot and then be able to use the coordinates of that spot. So let's start with degrees. Degrees are the easier of the two. We've got zero degrees because we always start... Um, at the at pointing to the right, we start at east and we work our way around counterclockwise. So I'm going to start with the major um, fact. So if we get all the way back around, that's 360 degrees. 360 degrees. If we get halfway around, this is 180 degrees. And then we can go to the quarters. We've got 90 degrees at the top, 270 at the bottom. And then we've got three spots in each quadrant. Let's do first the, um, what I'll call the, the 30s. Here's 30, here's 60, 90 we already have, 120, 150, we have 180, 210, 240, we have 270, then we have 300 and 330. Okay, these are all of the spots that are formed by 30, 60, 90 triangles, either standing up tall or laying down short. And um, these points are all going to have some things in common as we move on to the, to the trig functions, but those um, kind of follow the pattern of counting around by 30 degrees. The points that we skipped over, I'm calling those the 45s not an official name for these spots, but they're the ones that are in the middle of the quadrant. You've got 45, 90 again comes into play with the 45s because it's a, a multiple of 45. Then between 120 and 150, we have 135. And then down here we have 225 and then 315. And these are all gonna have certain characteristics in common when we start um, filling in the trig functions. But um, think of each quadrant as having two of these 30 spots and then the one in between. And this is, um, the, you're, you've worked a lot with, um, with degrees in the past. It's not, this, this shouldn't be too big of a stretch. We're just dividing up the 360 degree circles at some important locations. So let's not dedicate too much time to degrees. Let's work more with radians. Now let's start with a fresh copy. And now radians. Okay, so radians, this is mostly about working with fractions. You have zero radians to the right. Now, I don't put a degree symbol because this is a different type of measurement. This is a length, the length around the outside edge. If I get all the way back around, it's 2 pi. Okay, so um, make sure you realize that the full circle is 2 pi radians. And that's just the circumference. The circumference of any circle with radius 1 is 2 pi. Now that means if I went halfway around, this spot <clears throat> would be 1 pi. And at the top, it would be a half of pi, which we refer to as pi over 2. And at the bottom would be 1 and a half pi, 
but we call that 3 pi over 2. So these are your poles, northeast, southwest. The, these are as f um, the x and y's max values. Um, the biggest they can ever get is 1, and th these are those spots. Now, let's go to what I call the 30s on the last screen. So the 30s, um, 30 degrees is pi over 6. Um, I'm just going to start and base these on this first one, pi over 6. Um, ignoring this middle spot right now, I've taken each quadrant and I've divided it up into three pieces of pi. That means the entire top is six pieces of pi. And if the entire top is one pi, then each one of those is a sixth of pi, but we call that pi over six. So in my opinion, the easiest way to do this is kind of count around the circle by one sixths. Um, but then you want to simplify those fractions as we go. So this spot is one sixth. This spot is two sixths, but I don't want to call that two sixths. I want to call it one third. Then I'm up here at three over six, which is the same as one over two or pi over two. Then four sixths and four over six is two pi over three. And then five sixths, five pi over six. And pi is six pi over six or six sixths pi, which we simplify down to just one pi. Okay, so moving along, we have seven. Eight reduces to four thirds, eight pi over six, four pi over three. Nine pi over six, we've already addressed with three pi over two. Ten pi over six simplifies to five pi over three. And then 11 pi over six is one spot short of all the way back around. And then two pi, of course, is 12 pi over six. Okay, so that's counting around by sixths. What you notice is these steeper spots, the ones that are closer to the y-axis, they all end up with a 3 in the denominator. The shallower spots all end up with a 6 in the denominator. So that's a pattern that can help you remember because they just happen to be um, fractions with the numbers on top that don't simplify with the 6 on the bottom. So I think of these as the 6, but you could think of these steep parts as the third. Here's one third two-thirds, three-thirds is pi, four-thirds, five-thirds, six-thirds is two pi. So whatever makes sense most in your head, that's the way you should go, but you need to understand. Right now, when I say four pi over three, your mind needs to instantly take you to this location. And we'll figure out further things about this point. We'll figure out the sine and the cosine and all the other trig functions of that location. But right now, 4 pi over 3, you need to think, oh, it's, it's in the third quadrant, and it's the one closer to the y-axis. It's the steep triangle. Now, back to the ones that we missed. These are the fourths. This is pi over 4. Right, that's one-fourth of the way from 0 through the top. Pi over 4. 2 pi over 4, again, is pi over 2. We've already got that one. 3 pi over 4. 4 pi over 4 is pi, so that's the 180 degrees. Um, 5 pi over 4 is down in the third quadrant. 6 pi over 4, we've already simplified, is 3 pi over 2. And 7 pi over 4 in quadrant 4, and 8 pi over 4. All right, so like I said, this is a, not quite as intuitive to most people as degrees, but once you get some practice with this, um, it will get easier and easier. And my biggest suggestion is to remember the patterns. When you hear um, something over four, you should instantly think it's one of these middle spots. It's in the middle of one of my quadrants because those are the radian measures that have four in the denominator. When you hear something, something, something over six, you should be thinking, oh, I am here or here or here or here, because these, what I, what I call the shallow angles, the ones closer to the x-axis, these all have 6 in the denominator. And then, of course, when you hear 3, something pi over 3, we're thinking, oh, this is the steeper of the 30, 60, 90s. So use these patterns and relationships to help you fill out degrees and radians around the unit circle.